hear what's happening in the world because we're so focused on what's happening in our own personal lives. And I really want to help us to stop being so self-oriented. Considering what's gonna happen with my family and my life and what's, and these things are very important, but we are not our own. We are bought with a price. The desire, oh, my family this, and I have to pay my rent. Those things are all true. And, and, and if you can go back in your life, you can see how faithful God has been to you every month, every week. How many meals have you missed this month? How many meals have you missed this last year? How many meals have you missed in the last five years or 10 years? That wasn't from just a little something. And yet, how many times have you failed to meet the mind of God when it came to the work outside of yourself? Now, I have this playing, and I don't know if I can get this to do what I want it to do. Yeah, it won't. I don't know if it's going to loop. Here, let me, let me get out of here. Is it right click or does it? Okay. Now, I want to pray with you, but I really want you to consider time. The opportunity to do good is now. The opportunity to do good is not a future promise. And the reason why I'm making this point is because, you know, the, I keep having these little experiences where the Lord keeps saying that people think they have much more time than they think they, act, than they actually have. Whether it be time together, I'm not talking about Jesus Christ coming tomorrow. I'm talking about preparation for the event that is going to happen like a surprise. And the people that should not be surprised are the people, are you and I, people of the book. So for those that are able, I'm going to put my phone on airplane mode and turn on the recorder and let us bow for one more time for prayer. Father in heaven, have mercy, I pray. Lord, please remember for us the covenant. Look upon your dear precious son and remember for us our weakness and give us according as only your grace can give, as only your love can give. Give us the power that we need to see beyond ourselves and beyond our needs. We love you, Lord. Help us to perfect that love, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sunday's coming. Sunday is coming. But before Sunday comes, before the day passes the chaff, before probation closes, the opportunity to do good is, prevent, is presented. Go with me in your Bibles, the book of Matthew in chapter 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and I go through this verse quite a bit, and the reason why I keep going to this verse is because it is so important that we understand the context of this verse in verse 14. The entire chapter is about the, the coming of the Lord from the time where he was on the Mount of Olivet in, in AD 31, all the way down to the second coming that is this chapter included. But here, in verse 14, it says, 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a what, everyone? For a witness unto how many? All nations, and then shall the end come. So this is the gospel that's going to the Gentiles. That's why it's saying all nations. And he was speaking to prejudiced Jews. How do you know that the 12 were prejudiced? Were they prejudiced? They were considering... Jerusalem. They weren't thinking about the entire world. They were just thinking about their part. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of, of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Now, it wasn't because they were just naturally selfish. We are, they were. It is, but it is the, it is the unconverted heart. Like you may be, listen. Somebody may be converted on vegetarianism, but not be converted on the Sabbath. Do you understand? There are many people in the world that believe about being a vegetarian, but they, at the same time, sunset the sunset on the sixth day, you know, from the sixth day through the seventh, they do not consider that at all. So you can be partially converted on something and because you're partially converted to one truth doesn't mean that you have the truth. Acts 1 verse 6, the Bible says this. Verse 4, I'll start with verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Did you catch how many steps Jesus just gave there? He said, John, baptized with what? Water. And then he said, but ye shall be baptized with what? The Holy Ghost, not many days hence. But what came between the baptism of John with water what baptism was Jesus trying to give them? Before you can get the baptism of the Spirit, you have to have the baptism of the cross or the baptism of suffering. It's a requirement. We cannot receive the gift of the Spirit unless we accept the cross of experience and the cross is where duty meets feelings everybody understand that the desire to do good is good but Doing good is better than the feeling of doing good. Everybody know the difference? Verse 5. John, one, I mean, Acts 1, verse 5, it says, For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to what? Lord, they believed that they were zealous for the, for the gospel. They were zealous for the Messiah. They were zealous for the things of God. They thought that they were right with God. They thought they had a right focus, did they? Verse 7. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put into his own power. It's not for who to know. The 12 could not handle, at that time, the gospel going to the entire world. Anybody disagree with me? Just because I'm on a podium doesn't make me right. Just because I'm wearing a jacket and, 
and, and, a, and a button up shirt doesn't make me holy. It's okay to disagree with me, but I encourage you because everybody can have their opinion, but what I'm, what I'm trying to share with you is, is what we can do for our generation now, what they could not do for theirs. What they did end up doing. Now, they did end up get, receiving the Holy Ghost. They end up giving the gospel to the world. And anybody know how long it took them? Generation. One generation. Anybody know how much time that took? Well, generation can be 40 years, but within 40 years. So from AD 31 all the way until 70 AD but within. And the gospel had, got, had gone before that. It had gone to the entire world. It was, yes, it was in a generation, but it was approximately 20 years. Jerusalem was in 70 AD. So it was, it was only 39 years. It wasn't even a full 40. You understand what I'm saying? But then look what it says. Verse seven, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the father had put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and where else? Samaria and where else? And to the uttermost part of the earth. Was he saying that you're gonna go to only the people of God? That's a deception. Because who is the first people to reject God? The professed people of God. Right? How many of you like beating your head against a wall? That's what it's like to try to convince people to do right when they've been convinced to do it another way. Church people, you ever try to convince church people that they're wrong? Just think about it for a moment. Why is it so hard to teach people about the Sabbath? What happens? You go to them because they, they're like, listen, I've been praying. I've been reading and God's been answering my prayers. He's been working for me. He healed my mama. He saved me from the car accident. I know God is with me. Therefore, in their mind, he must approve of everything that I'm doing. Deception. Because love will do for you even though you're not doing what's right. I've already shared many times on how God answers Satan's prayers. Lord, bid me that, that we go not into the swine. What about the time when they prayed, you know, um, when, when, when Satan went to heaven and he prayed that God would give him power over Job? Did God answer Satan's prayer when he went to heaven? Do you have to be good for God to answer your prayer? No. That's what I'm saying. So, so now why am I bringing this? Go back to Matthew chapter 24. Was it good for Hezekiah to live an extra 15 years? It was not good. But did God answer his prayer even though he had already said Hezekiah? What if Hezekiah had done like Mary? Be it unto thee according to thy word. Right? What would have happened to the kingdom and the nation? The entire God was trying to spare Jerusalem, but because of the son of Hezekiah, it had to be destroyed. You understand that? All right. Genesis, we read verse 14. Okay. And we'll read it again. And this gospel, verse 14, Genesis 24, 14, but the, in this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto how many? All nations, and then shall the end come. But wait a second, Matthew 24 and verse 14 we read. Now let's go back to verse 12. 
And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall do what? What does that mean to wax cold? Wait, what is the iniquity that's being spoken of here? But look at this in verse 13. But he that shall do what? Endure unto the end, the same shall be what? Now I want you to catch this. Iniquity in this case, it's found in the very next chapter, Matthew 25 and verse 31. Matthew 25 and verse 31. See, iniquity abounds. Iniquity abounds. Why? Yes, but, but there's even something greater than why it does not. I agree with you because punishment is delayed. Matthew 25 and verse 31. When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, do what? Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed, and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? So wait, let me, let, me, let me make a point to you here. The question that they asked each time they asked was when? Everybody in here understand what I'm sharing? When, the question isn't whether or not you feed the hungry. The question is, when did you do it? There is a time to do it and there is another time when it's not to be done. there's a time when it cannot be done. When probation closes, the opportunity to do good is finished. See, I promise you that if you don't do it when it's inconvenient for you, you will not do it at other times. See, the inconvenience is the test. The test is, will you do what is needed when it's inconvenient for you? That's how you're going to determine whether you are saved or lost. See, go with me to Matthew chapter 12. Let me give you Bible. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Father in heaven, why is it sometimes when I go to look for this? It's not Matthew 12. Lord, let me think of where this text is. The text I'm looking for, maybe somebody can help me out very quickly, is when the daughter of Jairus was dying. Is it in Luke? Thank you, brother. Luke 8. Thank you, brother. Is it Luke 8? 49. 49? 
Oh, verse 41. Thank you so much. Please turn with me to Luke chapter 8 and verse 41. I appreciate your helping me, brother. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a what, everyone? A dying, but as he went, the people did what? Thronged him, and a woman having an issue of blood, how long? 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and what? Immediately her issue of blood was staunched, and Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Someone hath touched me, for I perceive that what is gone out, brothers and sisters? Life, power, virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, you have kept me from getting to this dying girl. How dare you? Listen to me. Was it important that he get to the little girl that was dying? Was he on a tight schedule? Is life or death a tight schedule? Not for Christ. Why? Why was it that he delayed? The reason why is because, look, brothers and sisters, if you don't stop and help the person that needs it when they need it, sometime later, listen, how many young people are tender hearted and love Jesus before they turn 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And they love Jesus. And, and we say, well, you know what? You know, get away from me, kid, you're bothering me. You know, that we, 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 try to, we try to tell them, you know, oh, they want to help us in the kitchen. You know how it is when the child is three or four and they want to come in and help you with dishes and you tell them, no, leave me alone. Go play. I don't want to do two times the work because of you. But now, when they're 11 and you say you're old enough now to do dishes, you can't get them in the kitchen. They hate it because you trained them to do so. When their heart was tender, we did not want to be troubled with their issues and the mess they would make. and we did them evil. And when you're praying later, you could pray for the next 20 years and the Holy Spirit will work. But the time, the time to help them was back then. The time has passed. And it's not that you can't get them now, but it's gonna be like raising the dead in order to get them to love something that they no longer love. How do you get a young boy you have grown men, I deal with this all the time. You have grown men who don't want to work. They wanna sit home, they wanna smoke weed, they wanna hang out with girls, they wanna drink, they wanna play video games. But when he was little, if you just pulled him aside and say, hey, will you, you wanna come work with me? You know how much little boys wanna be with their dads? Do you understand how, li listen, if dad would have just said, you can come ride with me, you ain't got to do anything. You'd be sitting in the car just like, <laughs> I'm riding with my daddy. But you have an entire generation who, know, who don't have a father. And because of that lack, when they get older, they don't even know what to do with a grown man. You let somebody grow up without a, without a parent and then you have somebody come in and try to impose something on them. They'll want to curse you to your face. Don't tell me what to do. I'm grown. 
the tree is bent and you're trying to make it go straight. But the problem is, is that that bent is in the character. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? I'm trying to tell you that when inconvenience comes to do righteousness, it may be your last opportunity to save your life. Let me give you Bible. Go with me in your Bibles, the book of Genesis chapter 19. See, you know that your probation will, can close on you at the time when you say no or later. Let me say it again to you. When you say later, I will do what's right, you are saying, no, I do not want to do what's right. And if you have trained yourself to do things later, you have an evil character and you need to be converted. Later, I will do good when convenience comes. Isn't that what they said to Paul when they left him in jail for, for a couple of years? When, the, when a more convenient season, when things aren't troubling me. See, if, if you and I will not give up our time now, right now is the only time you have for our doing good. Listen, the priest is on his way from Jericho to Jerusalem because he wants to get there for the priest. I mean, for the, for the, for the feast. He has to serve. He has things he has to do. It's very important. And he sees a man of his own nation laying on the side of the road, having been robbed, left half naked and dying, the Lord says, because he says he was half dead. Half dead means you're not about to live very much longer without intervention. And when he sees this man, the priest sees him, but he doesn't want to be confronted with it. So he does what many of us do. He makes sure that he gets far away so that it's not his responsibility. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the Levite comes up behind him. And when the Levite sees him, he at least stops and looks at him. But then he contemplates, what's this going to cost me if I, if I start this? You understand what I'm saying? The, for both of them, the question was a question of not what's good for him, but what's good for me. If you think what's good for you first, you're not fit for heaven. And I'm saying it as hard as I can because I really beg each and every one of us to check ourselves because knowing the truth cannot save us. The 12 did not have the fruit of the spirit. Their motive needed to be checked. And you know what fixed their motive? Do you know the thing that fixes our motive? You know what fixes your motive? Somebody else suffering. See, our Lord hung up on the cross. You're in Genesis chapter 19. Our Lord hung up on the cross and he said, I thirst. He hadn't had anything since the night before. And somebody out of sympathy, they don't go get him water. They get him distilled alcohol because that's what vinegar is. Vinegar is worse than alcohol, wine. When you distill wine, vinegar is worse for you than beer. You understand that? When you distill, when you distill wine, when you distill other forms of liquor, the highest distillation of it is vinegar. And they give them vinegar, which causes what to happen to you? It makes you even more thirsty. So they were making them worse. See, it is when you see somebody else suffering, this is what's supposed to awaken sympathy. 
Genesis 19, the Bible says this. Verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of the, the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to do what? Meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he did what, everyone? All right, no problem. See you later. I asked. The Bible says what? And he pressed upon them. This is the reason why Lot was saved. Had Lot gone home and said to his family, family, I see two men out in the street that look homeless. You think I should have picked them up? What do you think I should have done? It's too late now. Lot is lost. Do you know why? Because it is much harder to go back and change something than to do it when it's supposed to be done. But Lord, I'm in a hurry. I got something to do. The Lord's like, really? I thought you served me. Oh, you say you're serving me, but in reality, it's yourself that you're serving because that's how you can tell the difference of who you're serving. When you no longer get the benefit, that's the test. Who's benefited by your service? And when the Lord puts you in a place to where you're not going to get anything out of it, at least nothing that you can see, but the other person is going to save their life, it's going to do for them something that could not have been done, this is what's going to happen during the Sunday law. See, the Sunday law test isn't about whether or not you go to church on Sabbath. It includes it. But the Sunday law test is will you do good when you have limited means? What will you do? When your life is on the line, will you still help that person even though it might cost you? That's the test. And it's eternal. Lot helped because he had trained himself from what he learned in Abraham's house. He did the exact same thing that Abraham did. You're in Genesis. Go to Genesis 18, verse 1. Genesis 18 and verse 1. Watch what the Bible says. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he did what, everyone? He's like, hey, man, come here. You need something? Hey, hey, you, you need something? No. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going to beg you to take it to heart. This is your choice. Do you want to be a master or a servant? And I promise you, Everyone seeking to be a master will be lost. I promise you. Because even if you're in a place of a master, you ought to have the mindset of a servant. Do you know that all throughout the scriptures, the people who were, had the greatest amount considered themselves the servants of the Lord? Have you considered my servant, Job? Servants. But so many want others to serve them. The first thing in their mind is not 
that they should serve, but that they should be served. See, who gets more cities when the talents are given out, right? He says, you know, you know, he gave to one five and to one four and to one one, right? And then later on, those talents were translated into cities, right? Did everybody catch that? Not a, why were they translated into cities? Because it was she, seen that they were diligent with the talents that they were given, but the talents were representation of the ability for them to be greater servants. All the gifts that you've been given, if you can cook, it's, been, it's so that you can cook for lots of people. And you can teach other people how to live healthfully. If you're a mechanic, it's been so that you can help people get on the road. Yes, by that same, by that same gift, you'll make your living. But how you do it, because you'll be confronted with, they don't have any money. What do you do? Do you not fix their car? That's what the world does. Is that how Christ operates? Does Christ operate on me first? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. Yeah. So then I will say I will share for the for because she didn't have a microphone. Our dear sister, there are those who are unwilling to work, and if we continue to give to them, we will encourage their slothfulness. I agree because the same scriptures that says yes. So so it so for those who will not work, the same scriptures that says when I was in hunger, you gave me meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. The same word that says, if a man will not work, neither shall he do what? Because by whose sweat is a man to eat? By the sweat of his own face, Genesis 3, verse 21, I believe. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you, brothers and sisters? Okay, I'm bringing this to a close. So how do you check? I do this all the time. People call the church or they call and say, oh, preacher, preacher, man, pastor. Oh, pastor, I, I really need some help. You know, uh, my electricity and this, that, and the other. And I start asking them some questions. You know, it's reasonable. So you had money. What did you do? Did you? Oh, well, I don't have enough money for rent. Well, last month was December. Did you buy any Christmas gifts for December? You bought Christmas gifts for people before you paid your rent? Well, I'm sorry, brother, I can't help you with your rent this month. Well, well preacher, man, I got to give my children. I said, no, you don't. You got to give your children the fact that, a, 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 that a, a good man provides for his household. He provides for meat in due season. You understand? You didn't do them good by giving them gifts that they can't have after they're homeless. Sit up, you know better. But I'm saying this to you. You know what, brother? Even though you didn't do that, I will give you a chance. You might have to move out of your house, but you can stay with me. I can do both. You can come stay with me. As a matter of fact, it might be good for you to come stay with me because at my house, you're gonna learn how to work. And you're not just staying it with me for you know, an indefinite period of time where you just sit up and you eat all my food and, and you drink all my drink and, and you see me go to work. You're, no, 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 you're gonna work. And oh, you don't have a job? That's okay, I got something for you to do. Man, listen, let me tell you a secret how to get rid of a man that don't wanna work. What you do is you say, hey, uh, if you got children like this, you say, hey, you know, I absolutely love you. But um, here's a list of things I need you to do around the house. And if you don't do them, you have to move by the end of the day. Here's the list. Oh, what? I was going to go down and go for a job. I said, oh, you can do that too after you do your list. Listen, I come from a family where half of my family lives 
how to get stuff for free. They just, honey, have you met those side of my family? You haven't met a lot of them, have you? You only met a few of them, huh? We all probably have people in our family. It's not a white or a black thing. It's a human thing. It's called laziness. You have the body of an adult, but the mind of a baby. Feed me. Get this for me when you go to the store. Right? Please tell me I'm wrong. Hey, please tell me am I wrong? All right. Why did I bring these things up? Go with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. I need you to understand something. That last night was a state of the union and our president gave the state of the union. And he said some things that made me afraid. Anybody in here watch the state of the union last night? I really encourage you to go back and look at it. He talked about how well our nation is doing. He talked about the prosperity of our nation. He talked about the fact of how during his administration, how unemployment has gone down and, and how employment for people of color, uh, 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 of, of blacks and Asians and, and, uh, and, and Hispanics, how, how their record employment. Talked about how high the stock market is. He talked about all these things happening. And you know what I thought? Well, no, no, it wasn't that, not that he was, did anything wrong because he turned things around and did some things. But there's, listen, the underlying things are wicked evil in our nation. And, and he's trying to do the very, I don't, I'm not attributing any evil to him because I don't think that, I don't think that of him. I think he's probably one of the best presidents our country's ever had. As far as the work goes, I'm not talking about character. Now, that's just a personal opinion. You guys can disagree with me if you want. I, I could care less about that. But my point is this. The statements that he made, there was a whole class of people who, when he talked about how good things are in America and how, how things are better and how they're better for the African-American, how they're better for this and, and all the things he's doing to try to right the ship, there was a whole class of people who look mean mugged. You know what a mean mug is? Anybody, anybody in here, when, you, when, you, when somebody mean mug you, like, what, you got something? You looking at me? Why are you looking at me for? And they were mean mugging. And it made me think of the very first Republican president. And the very first Republican president came in when they were doing mad evil, they call it, when they were doing wickedness. And when this first Republican president came on the scene and he turned the ship around because they were thinking to bring slavery to everywhere. They had passed a Fugitive Slave Act, which meant that you can go get the slaves no matter where they went. There was no safety. And he had a good first term the first Republican. Anybody know what his name was? His name was Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. And right after he won his first, second election, 33 days later, he was shot by, anybody know who shot him? But what was Booth? What was his occupation? No, anybody know? John Wilkes Booth? He was an actor. That's how we got into the theater in the back. And John Wilkes Booth had saw Lincoln give his inaugural address. And after he gave that inaugural address, he was heated because he's like, he was, he was this far from, from one another. He was right there. 
If you've ever seen one of the drawings, it shows Booth was in the crowd listening to Lincoln. And he said, after that, he's going to die. Because the direction by which he's taken the country is not the direction I want it to go. He's against slavery. He's against the mistreatment of the, of the, of the African American. He's against all the, and they, they just go down the list of things. And all we want things is to go back to what they called normal, where we're in control and we are masters and not servants. You understand what I'm saying? And because Lincoln turned things around and God was speaking by him, you know that God was using Lincoln even though Sister White says that Lincoln was a horrible administrator. Look up Abraham Lincoln in the spirit of prophecy. Not now, later. <laughs> she talks about Lincoln not being a good administrator about why was he chosen, but for such a time as this. And Lincoln rejected the spirit of prophecy. We're going to talk about that on Sabbath. Did you know that Lincoln rejected the spirit of prophecy? Did you know that the spirit of prophecy spoke to Lincoln? I'm not talking about Ellen or any of these. No, I'm talking about Lincoln's wife had a dream from the Lord. The same way Josiah was warned by the king of Egypt, that said, God told me to do this, don't get in the way so that you don't get hurt by it. Between the North and the South. You guys know the story about Josiah? King Josiah died because he rejected the spirit of prophecy and he died in the land in the Valley of Megiddo as a symbol of those who had once believed in the spirit of prophecy, but when it came time to change their life course because of something that was immediately happened, they rejected it and died and will probably wake up in the second resurrection. Isn't that a hard saying? That good King Josiah, who did all the reforms, will, will more than likely wake up in the second resurrection? If you die in rebellion, you die a witch. Is rebellion witchcraft? That's what we said. That's what it says in Samuel. Are you saved by works? Am I saved by works? Does being a pastor get me enough credit in that I can do whatever wickedness I want? Let us do good. Let us do evil that good may come. Why am I sharing these things with you? See, it looked like everything was going up, but Lincoln is a representation of that last, sorry, that last Republican, as it were. You're in Revelation 13. Because what's, what's the Bible say about the first and the last? Because, because the two harmonize. How do you tell the end from the beginning? When you understand the beginning, then you can know what's going to happen in the end. If you want a Bible for that, you take in first, uh, you take in, uh, e, um, what's the name of that text, Lord? Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9 through 11, and Ecclesiastes 3, 14 and 15 that God requires that which is past. Lincoln did not believe when his wife said, we shouldn't go to the, I had a dream that something happened. We should not go to the, I think she had a dream he got shot. We should not go to the theater. They were having public shootings back in that day. The Secret Service had already saved Lincoln's life once, but they failed here. But let me tell you what's going to happen if something happens to this president. Revelation 13 and verse 11. 
And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a what everyone? Like a lamb and he did what? He spake as a what? What is the speaking of a nation? It's an act of their legislative and judicial powers, right? Do, are there are legislators that we have in our country that hate American prosperity? What is the dragon? We're finishing up here. The dragon is a nation, right? Because it's a nation, right? It's a king or a kingdom. And this dragon, where do we find descriptions of the dragon power? What's the first nation ever we, that we know of that's called by the dragon? Ah, it's actually not Egypt, it is Babylon, but Egypt is represented later on as it. But watch, the dragon is not just one nation, it's a type or it's a power that has belief structures and what are the belief structures of Egypt okay it it was they they rejected the creator and because of that they rejected the sabbath Right? Is that true or false? The dragon power, therefore they hated the people of God. Right? And because they hated God's people, they passed laws that specifically restricted their liberty. Special laws against God's people. You get that? They wanted to limit their political power. So how did they do that? That's why they came up with abortion or infanticide. The killing of babies. Do you understand this? They believed in idols, the dragon power, right? But they rejected true worship. Now I can go, this is just Egypt I'm listening, right? They rejected specifically the spirit of prophecy in the living prophet. Because when Moses came, did he believe the words of Moses? When the living prophet came and spoke to them, not just one prophet, but two came, Moses and Aaron, right? They were more concerned with money or the economy than they were with liberty, right? Their economy was based upon what? Slavery. Right? This is the dragon power. This is what, when the scripture says that he will speak like a dragon, that this is the things he's going to do. Pass laws against the Sabbath. Pass laws against, because listen, what power in America wants to do these things more than any other power? There's one power. And I'm very sorry if you belong to this power. Now, it doesn't say, you're in Revelation 13, this is not a political thing about beating up people who are Democrat. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he did what? It doesn't say that the Democrats are in charge. It says that it speaks like a dragon. There are other dragon kingdoms that, you know, we can go through Rome. Did Rome believe in killing babies? 
Did Rome make special laws against the people of God? Did Rome hate God's people? Did Rome hate the Sabbath? Did Rome reject the creator? Did Rome worship idols? Did Rome reject the spirit of prophecy, the living prophet? Did they choose money over liberty? Did they believe in slavery? Yeah, not even deal with the homosexual part, but, but were they? So, so you understand these things? This is the dragon because this is Satan's thoughts. Right? When God sends a king or a leader and that leader tends to point the people back to God, even if that leader is weak, it's because what's coming after is far worse. Do you know what happened after Lincoln died? See, after Lincoln died, the Republican Congress, they held power for a while, but the other, the, the Democrats came back and they won back the three branches of power here in America. And they began to pass laws to make the liberty of the freed slaves almost non-existent. And you end up having what's called Jim Crow laws. And you know what happened to them? During this time period and from this time period, the people, Sister White says that in 1860, that the time period of reconstruction from 1865 to 1877 was the time when we had to work to get those people right for God. But when the nation didn't do it, the Democrats took control in 1877 and they made it to where it is up until a hundred years from there. This is the history. I'm not giving you something. I'm, this is not my opinion. This is in the spirit of prophecy and this is in the history. So I wanna finish where I started. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 25. And what did I say was the issue in Matthew 25, verse 40, verse 31, all the way down, specifically of the sheep? The question was what? What did they ask? What did they say to the Lord? The question was when? This is what I want to start with. I want to finish where we started. When? In 18, from 1865... From the close of the Civil War to, 18, to 1867, 1877, the Adventist church had the opportunity of doing that which is right in God's sight, but because there was nothing in it for them, they really needed help. And, That's right. She said, John Harvey Kellogg didn't get any support. Let me tell you something. We, they were told to go down and to help these people to come up and to give them training and to educate them. Do you wanna know why? Do you wanna know why? Because when this people, this poor people are turned to the Lord, it was by them, these same ex-slaves that, the, that they would replace the 150,000 people or even the 200,000 people that accepted the message or and they would be, they would bring in, because you know how many ex-slaves were down there? There were 4 million. God was going to use them to bring Christ back. By not going to do that work to help that, those people right when they had a need, what they were actually destroying was themselves, Adventism. And when you don't do it, and when you see somebody to help, when you go to pray for your child, God will tell you no. But my grandchildren, the Lord says, but you don't care about anybody else's children. Why should I care about yours? I'm going to leave you to save them. 
You want your mom and your brother, your sister, your cousin. You want the people that at your job or whatever it is, you want them to be saved. You know what God wants you to do? Stop trying to be God and do what he says when he says it, not when you feel like it. That's the message for tonight. Be a Christian. Today, when you hear his voice, that's the message. Stop thinking of the great work you're going to do in the future and be faithful right now. That's the message. Because the angels are waiting for a lot to come and help them. Because he says, we're going to save you and your children. You want to save your children? Surrender. And do those things that are inconvenient when they come up. Now, the Lord will give you wisdom as to see if it's a trick of the devil. But don't be afraid of losses. How much can you give up that God can't replace? Hundredfold houses and lands, he says it. Can you outgive them? But you should try. You want to try? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we need a generation that perfectly reflect the character of God, that love their enemies so much that they would give up their firstborn for their salvation. Lord, I need this experience. I need this love. My family needs it. Our church needs it. The world needs to see Jesus in the person of his saints. Someone who chooses others over themselves. Lord, please help me. Sometimes I'm like Jones and I push things too far one way, but I, I mean no ill intent. But I pray that you would give your people the ability to go back and to search and see if these things are so. I pray, Lord, that my mannerisms have not offended that they should reject the truth. I pray that you would give grace and strength to your people. And I pray, Lord, that you would save us in the end from the selfishness of the natural human heart that we would be converted to thee and that we would be just like thee in heart and in life, that we might live with thee throughout eternity. Help us, Lord, because there will be no hungry people and no homeless people in heaven. The only time to do good is now. Thank you for your mercy, and I pray for our wives, I pray for our children, and I pray for our, our families. In Jesus' name, amen. I appreciate you spending this time with me. As I take the last 